Good morning, class. I'm Zakaria Mansour. I'm your teacher for today. Uh, some of you have been with me last week and the week before. I just want to say good morning to everybody. Is everyone okay? Hope you're having a good uh, Saturday morning. Must have been a long day at school. Uh, I'm going to be your life sciences teacher if you, if you weren't here last week. Um, I love biology, so let's get on with it. Just want to see my participants. Uh, we have Lungelo. Can I ask you to unmute? Is Romelo there? Yes, sir. Morning, Lungelo. How are you? Morning, Sam. Doing good. Excellent. Uh, is Pamelo there? I'm here. Uh, hello, Pamelo. Were you here last week? No, I wasn't. Okay, excellent. So again, we started at the beginning of this um, session or the last two sessions. We started with uh, Unit 7 and we started with exoskeletons. Uh, are you familiar with uh, Unit 7 exoskeletons in animals? No, we haven't started with it at school yet. Okay, so what unit did you guys stop at? Uh, we just finished with plant tissues. Okay, plant tissues. Okay, lovely. Uh, Lungelo, what about you? Lungelo? Um, we are still in, we just finished plant tissue too. Okay, excellent. So you guys are on par. Quickly, Lungelo, are you from, uh, where about are you from again? School. And went to it. Second day. Went to it. Okay, correct. You and the other girl were there from went to it. And Pamela, where are you from? I go to Bryanston High. Sorry, ma'am. Where about is that? In Santon. Okay, lovely. We have Lungelo from went to it, and Lungelo from Santon. Okay, so basically, Pomelo last week we started or the week before with exoskeletons. Um, there's a lovely video for you, but I'm not going to be showing you that today. Uh, we, uh, hydrostatic skeletons, and then we have something called um, so we have hemocells, uh, types of tissue uh, in the exoskeleton. But before we're going to go on to that, um, just refreshing your memory from these things. If you look at the pictures here, uh, it's similar to what you have in your study book. So basically, let's look at uh, this, this animal here, this aquatic animal. What is it? So there are two, two people here, there's Pomelo and there's Lungelo. Uh, let's start with, uh, start with Pomelo, good. Uh, Go it looks like a jellyfish. Okay, jellyfish. Uh, of course, it's different to land animals and other animals that exist on the surface. And here we have something beneath the surface. So can you describe its shell for me? It's exoskeleton. How different is it to other animals? If you, Pomelo, had to look at this picture compared to the next one, how different is this to that? So we have another crustacean here. If you look at the, the bones are shitness, but like you can see the structure is different. What can you 
how can you differentiate between this one and this one here? We have a jellyfish and we have a crab. Can you differentiate between this exoskeleton and this one here? What's the differences? Are there any resemblances? We're going to start with uh, Lungelo. Uh, I just want to say between Lungelo and Camelo, if you have, if you want to say something at any minute, just unmute. It's fine because I want to have a conversation and not feel like you're in the classroom. The the jellyfish looks like has a soft exoskeleton. I don't think it has a, an exoskeleton. Yes, exo so basically, in this case here. It starts off from the center, of course, when it's a baby or when it's a small infant, and then it grows out, and this is its exoskeleton. Because remember, what is the function of an exoskeleton? Remember last week we, we did, um, there was an animal that we saw, the one that had like plates on it. Um, can't remember yes. the name of it. Armadillo, it was called armadillo, so it was covered like a tank. So that's its exoskeleton, but this one is its exoskeleton. Of course, it is. Can you tell me about the density between the density between the two? So I want to know what do you think about the density between this one and the next one? So let's go to the to um, to Melo. Can you describe this one here now? Um, this one looks like it has a hard exoskeleton. Excellent, very hard exoskeleton compared to the first one. What would be, now if this one is hard and the other one is soft, what would be the predator for the soft one and what would be the predator for this hard one? Let's go with Lungelo. What do you think would be the predator? Uh, now? The predator. We have some um, back in community. Go on, go on. So, so I course, didn't quite get the question. Okay. So basically, you have this crab here and you have the jellyfish. What would be the normal predator for this one? What would come and kill this crab compared to the other jellyfish? The, the crab will be the predator yes but of course in nature we have a pyramid scheme so example a tiger would eat a warthog what animal do you think would eat this crab because look at it it's huge it's not like a small baby crab you know like it's not like a small crab that will fit on your plate this crab is like the yes. size of this human Maybe humans? Yes, possibly humans would be a natural predator to this excellent. Um, I'm thinking if it was, I can't think of a, a lion eating this or even a donkey. So. Or an, an, an eagle or a seal. Uh, yes, excellent. A seagull. Excellent. A seal would definitely eat this as well as a, probably a whale, a walrus, maybe even. Um, so, are there any other? fish and stuff like a uh, group of fish sharks they would probably eat this so excellent the natural predators for this would be uh fish and as you said like birds you have coconut vultures uh, but of course other vultures would eat this so it does have natural predators excellent i just want to go back to the other one uh pomelo are you there what would be the natural predator for fish here uh, I think probably a sea turtle, maybe. Okay, yes, e excellent. There's one There's one specifically that's very kind of carnivorous. It's called a snapper turtle. It, the head of it looks like a snake, but you're right. Yes. A turtle would definitely eat this. Sharks would definitely eat this. Uh, of course, the disadvantage to it is, of course, it's soft uh, exoskeleton. But as you can see here, that it has what tentacles here to its advantage 
So of course it's going to use this tentacles for what? To shock the predator. But yes, to shock the predator to get food as well. And you notice that the fiber here is similar to the exoskeleton. It looks like almost hair, but the a similar material. Um, these things have been around for billions of years, just floating around, imagine that. Okay, let's go to the next exoskeleton. Okay, so here we have a fish. Looks kind of weird, but it's actually huge. Um, it looks similar to a fish called a dorado. Okay, so we have two to describe here, two different exoskeletons. Uh, which one are you gonna take, Lungelo? I take the, the beetle. Okay, good. You got the beetle and Nello has this fish here. Okay, quickly, let's describe the, the fish for Melo. Let's it start with like, the exoskeleton. Yes, it looks like it has a soft exoskeleton on the sides. It does uh, look like it's soft, like almost marshmallow. Huh? Yes. Okay, carry on. And the top of the head, it looks like it probably has a hard exoskeleton. It looks like a hard skull in there, so of course, we have a, a, the skeletal structure inside. Like a normal fish, we just have bones going down here, but this one, it has a, like a hump there. Um, yes. I'm thinking, you know, when you have like other animals like goats and stuff, they normally have a thick head here because they headbutt. Have you seen other, like goats and other cows headbutting each other? So this, the structure of this, I, I haven't seen these fish head, but anything, but it's kind of weird. Of course, it's an adaptation or uh, it's evolutionary to this fish as well. If you look at the top here, you can see that its exoskeleton is, is not that powerful compared to or strong compared to like a rhino's probably, but as you can see, it does have injuries here. A uh, natural predator to this one would possibly be one of these fins. I don't know if you can see, but there's like a black tip shark here. Uh, that could be a natural predator. Let's go to the next one. We have a beetle here. Yes, go on, Lungelo. Hello? Yes, go on. I was, I had uh, some technical okay, um, no, issues. Okay, no problem. Then, can you repeat the question? Yes, so we described the fish exoskeleton. Let's go to the next one, the beetle. Uh, can you just basically describe it and think what would its functions be like for this purpose? Of course, it's different to the fish. Okay. So the beetle, the beetle's exoskeleton looks like uh, it's, it's hard. Yeah, it looks it's a hard, hard correct. And it looks it's like hard. it has some, some jaws. Um, what are okay. they doing? They're like clam food, but yes, correct. And of course, why do you think this exo, to the both of you, why do you think this exoskeleton is split here? What is inside here? I think there, there's some wings inside. Yes, correct. So it opens them and it flaps them for wings. Pretty nice. Not all, do all beetles fly? Uh, I don't think so. Yes, not all of them fly. Um, do, would you eat some, would anyone eat this? Like for Melo Lungelo, would you eat something like this? No. No. I guess if you're like really hungry, starving, you probably would, but in general, no. In some countries, they eat, um, they actually eat beetles like this. They dip them in chocolate. Like, like they have big ants and stuff with a soft exoskeleton. They take the body of the ant, they hold it by the head and they dip it in chocolate and it's like a delicacy. What do you think about that? <laughs> 
No, no comment. <laughs> Pamela, what do you think about that? I don't think I would eat it. But... Like, so you guys haven't tasted like mopani worms and other bugs? I have. No. Oh, you have? Good. So how is mopani worms? They are crusty on the outside, but they have a soft inner feeling. Come on, Langelo. Even Pomelo's eating these worms, man. He's saying when you <laughs> need to like, go in a garden, just go and dig up some of these things and taste them. No. So anyway, <laughs> they're so tasty. But like, like the other things that people eat are so weird. Like this, uh, of course, there's locusts. And some people eat grasshoppers. It's like, I don't know if you guys know, like uh, there's something called ugali, which is like pop. So you just like fry the stuff, like the worms and like mopani worms with like chutney and eat it. It's very nice. I hope you get some uh, lungelo. Anyway, good one. Let's go to the next one. Now, of course, you look at its function here. There are some of them that like have a specific function, like there's an African dung beetle, which doesn't, which does fly. But it just it uses this to just roll a ball. So all of these beetles have like specific function to them. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so we have two. We have the starfish, and we have anyone. Uh, I'm gonna take the the starfish. The starfish. Okay, uh, Lungelo. This is a. Uh, So, what do you think this is? A lizard. Okay, a lizard. Excellent. Let's go to. Okay, think about the starfish, Lungelo. We're gonna go to Pomelo. Pomelo, can you describe this? It looks like. Let's go on. Tell me what you think about it. Okay, it looks like it has a soft but scaly kind of exoskeleton. Okay, and it's of course a lizard and it lives in the wild. Of course it eats. What can you tell me about its diet? What do um, you it, think it lizards like this eat uh, insects. Correct. Like insects, yes. Okay, so it, most of the, or some of the lizards are amphibious. If you look at the skin here, it is amphibious. Kind of, it can live in water, but of course they don't breathe in water. Um, what an adaptation to it would be uh, probably like cooling its body using respir like what a crocodile does in some way. Um, they are not cold, they are cold blooded, unlike mammals. Okay, good. Let's go to this one here starfish exoskeleton here. It, it could be similar to the one in the jellyfish, very soft. You notice a lot of aquatic animals have that type. But if you look at this picture here, almost looks like uh, octopus is behind it. Is it the octopus or is it just a rock? Could be just a rock, coral rock. Go ahead, uh, Lungelo. Oh, um, it looks, it looks soft. And, uh... But it it looks the it looks like there's a tough leather thing on top. Okay, so it has these white spots on them. Of course, every go every starfish is different to the other in, in comparison to its species. They are different colors. They're very soft as well. Um, they move around like almost fingers. You know, like fingers moving around. Uh, there's a popular cartoon on TV which is called um, what's a cartoon with a with a starfish? Mm -hmm. Isn't it SpongeBob? SpongeBob in square pants. Do you know SpongeBob in square pants? Of course. Yes. So uh, SpongeBob is this the sponge, the normal sponges you get, and Patrick. I don't know if you guys know Patrick. Yes. So Patrick is the one who's the purple starfish, very funny. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of people eating these things. Have you seen people eating starfish? 
No. I haven't no. come across it. Even at restaurants, uh, you never, you probably would never see something like this here. Uh, exoskeleton is very soft. It has its own different setup compared to the other jellyfish. But of course, they all want to survive. What do you think this one eats? Uh, and where does it eat from? Um, it looks like it, it's um, it's from the outside of his body, maybe, and from the soft or, or through tissue. Yeah, because some of tissues. them do have like mouths and stuff at the bottom. Uh, this one here has tentacles, so possibly the, it possibly eats like how an uh, octopus would eat with a small uh, set of like teeth at the bottom here. Okay. Sorry, host, can you pause? I want to go to my PDF, please. Unfold it. Yes. Okay, so basically yes. this is where we started last, the first week. So let me go to the top picture here. So this is what you guys are studying at school. Okay, so basically we start doing with this one here. Okay, so we got skeletons. This is unit seven quickly. Uh, we did this last week. We're talking, we already talked about the different types of structures and some of the functions related to some of the structures. Uh, some of the main types of skeletons found in, in living things are the hydrostatic skeleton. Uh, we, we've seen the one, of course, hydro, aqua, um, those ones referring to amphibious uh, reptiles or amphibious creatures. What are amphibious? A-M-P-H, amphibious, anybody? Amphibious. Amphibious are like the ones that live. Anybody? Um, I think amphibious means um, it's suited for both land and water. Yes, excellent. Land and water. Um, so we've discussed some of those ones. We discussed the endoskeleton in some of them, like the like inside of fish, where you have a lot of. Um, it's different compared to, you have a different spinal structure compared to other animals. And we talked about the exoskeleton and even the beetles as well. Um, human skeletons are different. Uh, they consist of axial skeleton, appendicular. So the shapes, of course, here we have appendicular, telling you that even when you use algorithm and other um, formulas, there's not one to stipulate exactly for, for certain species, they're all different. And scientists have to study them uh, and use them in reference to others in order to put them into the correct uh, category. Um, of course, that's what science about testing and stuff. Um, we talked about this one here. The bones, the cartilages, tendons, ligaments are important structures between the skeletons and the movement, of course. So this one here is for, for skeletons. It's important to understand the relationship between structure and function of bones. So a main function of a bone compared, we looked at, um, I'm gonna go, so I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint, please. This. So as you see here, we talked about how this one, of course, is not amphibious, but if you had to take this jellyfish and put it on a table, what would happen to the structure? So I'm gonna take the jellyfish, put it on a table in front of us. Would it stand up straight? 
No. No. No, of, of course. So the structure of this skeletal, the endoskeletal of it is different to, uh, let's say, a human because what keeps us upright, the main function of our bones is to keep us upright. And in the middle of our body, we have something called spine. Spine, correct. Now, we like, so exactly. So if you put this on a table, it's going to just like flop up like jelly. And again, if you see a harder structure like these ones, you know that structures like it's simple volume and mass. If you take a container and you look at water, you put water in there, it takes the shape of the container. But in actual fact, it doesn't have a shape. So when you look at the stuff that's inside, so you have two types of, of fluid. So one is called the, the, the coelom. And as you can see, if you take a, a flat worm or any type of worm and you cut it, laterally, you can see the inside of it. Uh, so you have tissue uh, and that tissue is the coelom, this part here. Uh, of course, in different worms or different animals, you have different tissue structures here. The commonality in all of them is this mesoderm region here. Uh, and then in the center, you have a digestive tract. Now, these ones here are different to our type of system because we don't have a digestive tract like this in the center of like these worms. So if in comparison to humans, how different is this compared to humans? Like, let, let's look at Longelo. In our, in our skeletal system, do we have a, this structure, like hydrostatic skeleton, which is the coelom? Do we have the center mesoderm like these worms? No. Okay, good. So, Pamelo, what do we have instead of this? We have intestines. Yes, correct. We have intestines. And so that's the difference. So as you can see, uh, this doesn't have a rib structure like us. It doesn't have a rib structure like us. So we have different types of, uh, and then, so there's two types of fluid. One is the coelom fluid and one is the hemocell fluid. Uh, the hemocell is the one, if, so the first one, the fluid is like everywhere and then the tract is in the center. Compared to this one here, like the beetle, where you have the fluid here on the outside. So it's not like the worm because it has a skeletal structure. Of course, not like a human, but it has. So the one that has a structure is called the humor cell, the liquid, and the other one is the ceiling. Okay, so go to the next one here. Thank you, sir. Can you get off the movement? The important for movement in all animals. Uh, these ones here, tendons and ligaments, you know, they are between our bones and stuff, especially now in winter. Sometimes you do feel pain. You could have some fluid in there. Um, the people that suffer the most with these kind of pains in their tendons and ligaments, like in your knee, most of them are like sports related. Most of them are sports related or injury related. Uh, of course, we have synovial joints as well. Uh, these are where your where they basically function for for movement. Um, the next page. Okay, so the three types of skeletons, namely that exist: hydrostatic. Hydrostatic again comes from hydro. Uh, I don't know if you guys play uh, watch Avengers and stuff, but there's a whole like fan base of the hydro gang. But anyway, they related to water. Water experts. Water exerts pressure on muscular walls for ample, for example, in jellyfish. We talked about jellyfish. Exoskeleton grasshoppers or prawns, very similar. Uh, and the endoskeleton vertebrates, um, for example, like humans. Okay, let's see the other one. So we talked about this one here. Um, I want to show you something here.
Okay, it uses its muscles to contract against the hydrostatic scale to bring about movement. So the way that it swims, I'm sure you've seen how jellyfish swim very like gracefully. Um, they look like almost ballerinas in water. Um, they shape as well. I'm sure you know fish, the, the bigger they are kind of, uh, the, the more friction they have. So if you look at a fish like a barracuda, it's one of the fastest fish in the world. Um, the changing of the shape of the animal reduces friction and drag, but not in, in the barracuda case. The barracuda is like straight, like almost like a swordfish. So if you in water, you want something to reduce your friction. Now, can you tell me two exoskeletons, you have a bird and you have a fish. So I'm gonna give Lungelo the bird, Pamelo the fish. What helps reduce friction in, uh, Lungelo, did you have the fish, right? No, I had uh, the bird. Okay, so the bird and uh, Pamelo the fish. So, um, okay, so we got the barracuda with Pamelo, uh, we got the hawk with uh, Lungelo. Can you just think about the exoskeleton of these two animals? When they are flying, Lungelo, how does the wing need to be? Like, do, does it need to be out and flared? Uh, we've, we've discussed the skeleton in the beetle very quickly. Um, we've discussed other, we've discussed some of the amphibians. Um, We've discussed some of the other ones that live on land. Uh, we've discussed the starfish. But please remember that I want to tell you about the eagle. It, its feathers don't flap up when they're flying quickly to reduce the re resistance or friction, even with air. So similarly, Pomelo, with a fish, it has an exoskeleton of what, generally, in water? A soft exoskeleton. Okay, but basically scales, because like a bird has feathers, so the fish has scales, right? Yes. So it's designed so well that it reduces friction, and when you hold a fish, is it rough or is it slippery? It's slippery. It's slippery, so it also has slime on its scales that it produces to reduce friction. So I just want you to show you like, in all cases, like for especially flying quickly and moving quickly in the water, exoskeletons, they adapt very well, or the animals adapt very well to these different types of conditions. Um, I'm going to wrap up. Uh, next week, we're going to continue where we stop. I uh, hope you guys have a good weekend. Does anybody have any questions? If you do have a question, please remember the last one that I asked you, if you can just do some research on that.